Hi everyone, this is Emanuele from Italy, but you know me better as Evil Dead Italia. Um, in this live, uh, we are going to have a very cool guest, Peter Albrechtsen from Denmark. Um, Peter is a um, very is a is an awarded Danish uh, uh, sound designer, and uh, he is the guy behind uh, um, the sound design of Evil Dead Rise. So, without any further ado, I'm going to present you, Peter. Hello, Peter. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm very happy to have you here. It's a it's a pleasure um, and and an honor to me. <laughs> thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I love your poster, obviously, on your back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie that I, I think I'm starting to know better uh, because uh, as more I go ahead, I, I I'm starting to know more details behind the scenes, and and I love this. Uh, there is a, a guy from Denmark that say you hello. Hi, Hi Alex. Alex. Hello. And um, so, um, first thing, uh, I would like to ask you a very stupid question, but but it's not so so stupid for a, a guy like me that uh, work in a completely different, uh, you know, uh, industry. So, uh, how it is the the day by day life of a sound designer? What is your precise work? I mean, as a sound designer of movies, you're kind of the ears of the director you're the one kind of building the whole sound world of the film um together with the director together with the picture editor together with the composer um so um for me on on a film like uh, evil dead rise i was uh, attached already from the script so uh, lee cronin reached out to me and I got to read the script and it was really inspiring. So I already at that point, I start collecting sounds because I read the script and I get a lot of ideas. And then they go uh, shoot the film. And then when the picture editing starts, then I start doing sound as well. And um, um, as a sound designer, in a way you are kind of bringing the sonic visions of the director to life and for someone like lee cronin who was the director of evil dead rise he had so many ideas about how the sound should be it was very inspiring um really amazing for a sound designer to get to to really feel that the director has so many ideas so then it's my job to kind of make all those sounds come alive in a way um, and um, on a film like Evil Dead Rise, I, I was working for that on uh, for eight months, actually. It was a long period of time. Uh, on other projects, I worked for a short amount of time. It always depends on budget and schedules and so on. But yeah, as a sound designer, you are really the one who tries to make the sound come alive. Okay, so what you said uh, about what you said, I have the first, the very first question. Uh, so it, it was Lee Cronin that called you. Uh, that uh, it means that you already worked with him. You were friends from another kind of work. I mean, Lee got my name recommended from uh, Irish sound designer I know. Um, so uh, they reached out to me. I got this mail one day saying. Uh, we have this special project, uh, uh, the, a new Evil Dead film. Are you interested in hearing more? And I was like, okay, is someone like, is this spam or something? <laughs> like, because I, for me, I've, I've been a fan of Evil Dead. Like, since my teenage years, I was especially Evil Dead 2. For me, that was just like, kind of like, almost like the Holy Bible. I, I, I remember having it on a VHS tape that I watched so much that it fell apart. Um, I was really a big Evil Dead fan. So like getting that, getting that mail, that request was just like, whoa, okay, this is amazing. And then getting to work with Lee and getting to know him um, was, was really amazing and inspiring. And then the whole team 
um, really, I mean, everybody worked so hard on this film uh, to make, make it something special because all of us were big fans of the old original Evil Dead movies. So we really wanted to create something extraordinary with this film. Yeah, uh, that's what you said is, uh, is real because uh, every person I interview about this movie, uh, from many of them uh, come out, you know, this kind of love for the movie. Uh, in particular, Cronin, as you, he loved Evil Dead too. Uh, but even in the other guys who worked on the movies, I mean, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I interviewed a, with a Swedish guy that um, he, he, he is an artist. He just drew the poster that you can see in the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, uh, even with that specific, with a, with a single thing like that, there are were so much back uh, behind the, the scene work, you know, and um, so, I mean, a great effort from 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 anyone. And, and so you you said uh, you you love the Evil Dead from the beginning. So uh, let's say, uh, how much did you uh, know about the f the movie before you start working on the sound? I mean, you worked in post production, even in pre production. How this work? I mean, how is your work started? I uh, I got the script. I got Lee's script before they started shooting, so that we could start talking about some ideas, and I could also talk with the production sound mixer. Uh, the film was shot in New Zealand, so um, um, like just discussing some ideas with Lee about like. All the all the many many ideas that he had for sound in the script, and then also just trying to find out okay, is there something specific that we need from the shoot? Um, is there something we need to take care of? And then, um, then yeah, from from when they stopped shooting, or actually even before they finished shooting, I was already working on it. Um, right now, I'm sitting in my studio in Copenhagen. And this is where I started doing the first sketches. Uh, I think the um, the elevator scene uh, with the um, uh, where Ellie gets possessed the first time. That's kind of like the first one of the first sequences that I started to work on, and I did that in this very room. Oh, okay. So uh, another question: Did you ever? Well, uh, did you ever visit the New Zealand for this specific work, or you work uh, from your uh, studio there in Denmark? They started p doing the picture edit in New Zealand, and I never went to New Zealand. Uh, I did um, the first work I did, I did here in Copenhagen. And then when uh, Lee and the picture editor moved to Ireland, I also moved to Ireland. So we were doing a lot of the work in Dublin. And then when we were mixing the film, then because we were mixing in this um, new sound format called Dolby Atmos, um, then uh, we couldn't mix in Ireland because there weren't any mix stages in Ireland that were um, that had Dolby Atmos. So we actually mixed here in Copenhagen again. So we went back to Copenhagen for the final mix. Um, so. Yeah, it was there was a bit of traveling, um, and um, yeah, and it it was actually a couple of months before I even got to meet meet Lee in person. We had so many meetings, um, but uh, I didn't meet him until we met in Ireland. That that's great. And how much you know of the movie uh, until you? Are, I mean, uh, you you see the movie while uh, the scene were shoot were shot. Or uh, you see it all in the end, and then you working on on that on, on on that material. So already from reading the script, you kind of get a sense of what I mean. You know the story, you know what's going to happen, and then um, what then happens when they start editing. Then whenever they had a scene ready that they felt that I could see that and start working on that, uh, then that was how it was in the beginning. So. For a long time, I didn't see the full film. I just like I just did a scene here and scene there, scene here and scene there, uh, and then at one point we kind of like 
they they had a first kind of cut of the whole film and then you could watch the whole film but yeah so i was part of it from the very beginning in that sense and uh, kind of experiencing the material as early as uh, the rest of the like the picture it's only and so on and that was really great because there's so many scenes in the film where sound plays a very big role and you really needed the sound to make sure that the scenes were working because the way that Lee wrote the scenes was so much about sound. T talking about that, um, I was um, I, I was uh, at Bruce Fest uh, uh, some day ago, this Sunday, if I'm not wrong. Yes, this Sunday. And uh, there were a Bruce Campbell masterclass about acting. And at the end, he talked about the sound of Evil Dead Rise because someone asked him about his involvement in this. And he talks about the fact he brought all the original sound digitalized from the very first movie. And uh, they decided to put the fly uh, at the beginning. That's, I, I, I recognize as soon as I, I, mean, I, I sit on the chair on, at the theater. But um, I mean, uh, how this happen? I mean, they, they bring the, uh, they send you a file. They uh, when Bruce Campbell come, I suppose that Bruce Campbell come in Copenhagen, you're right? They, they work at the close with you, I suppose. Yeah, Bruce Campbell uh, came first to Dublin, and then afterwards he came to Co Copenhagen for the mix. So he he was there both for the last part of the sound editing and the sound mix. Um, but way before that, actually, one of the first things that happened when I got the job was that I got this. Um, all I mean, I got access to all these files with the sound libraries from Evil Dead 1 and 2. Uh, so I got all these recordings that they had done for those films. And a lot of those recordings were actually done by Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi themselves because they it was such a low-budget production that they did a lot of the sound work themselves and they were very, very involved in the sound. So... Um, it was actually all the raw material. It wasn't just like the sound that was in the film. It was also all the original recordings. So it was like, for example, like you hear an announcer saying, death scream, take one. Beep. Ah! Death scream, take two. Ah! And then <laughs> you could hear all these recordings made of all the different stuff that they needed for the first two movies. So a lot of it was Bruce's voice, like doing all kinds of weird things and then doing manipulations of that and, and stuff like that. But there was also like a lot of other cool sounds, like they recorded this wind in Sam Raimi's uh, hotel room that is actually uh, in Evil Dead. It's the sound inside the cabin. So it's this weird wind sound that was outside the window in his hotel room where they were shooting the film. And they used that inside the cabin in the in Evil Dead 2. And then we used it in the vault scene in Evil Dead Rise. So that's the actual the sound of the cabin that's in the vault when, oh, when Danny crazy. gets into the vault. That's so, so there's a lot of references like that when Bruce came to Ireland one of the first things we did was that he uh, sat down with me and we kind of listened through the sounds that he had given me and then um, he kind of picked out like 10 sounds or something that he felt were like these were really important sounds that he felt like should be in the film and that was for example this wind sound and it was the fly and things like that. So there's these different small kind of um, sound quotes or sound references to the first couple of movies. I, I have a technical question. I mean, those sounds were recorded with some very old devices, I suppose. Uh, how, how can they be digitalized in a cool way i mean uh, maintaining a good quality i mean uh, it's uh they, they have a good quality i suppose because if you use them uh, they need to be very high quality 
Yeah, I mean, they were recorded on this uh, these tape recorders that were actually pretty good. So, I mean, of course, it's a little hissy and noisy, stuff like that, but it's it it wasn't that bad but i mean the ones we used up front we kind of did some cleaning and stuff to make it more um sound i mean simply to make it sound better um because of course sound technology has evolved a lot since back then um but i mean actually i feel often that to me, it's okay that a sound is a little noisy or a little distorted. Uh, it often gives that it's some kind of special feel. Whereas if everything is like just like very, very clean and has, I mean, just seems too perfect in a way, then it can get so sterile in a way, like just like it feels like it's lifeless in a way. And I actually much prefer using sounds that have a little grit and a little texture to them. So in that sense, it was okay using some of these old sounds. That's great. That's great. Just a moment. Okay. There is uh, there is a video. Uh, I mean, I, I have a question. So the, um, I, I've seen a video you sent to me today because um, uh, Peter um, participated to a documentary video. I mean, I, I think that that is a technical channel, right? About uh, sound maze, sound design, if I'm not wrong. So it, it, it's a very interesting video about uh, how the scream of Ellie in the bath, bathtub uh, was uh, realized. A, a, and it's a great video. But uh, before talking about that and specifically, a, a, one thing you, you talked about in that video is that the, there are professional that, that dub uh, or make uh, scream for a living substantially i mean people that uh, uh, scream uh, and sub scream i mean so I, i'm interested in this i mean uh, it, it's um, they are just dubber they are um, other kind of profession i mean it's particular i, I never known that well it's that's more like something that was once upon a time there was this whole concept about scream queens which were like uh women voice actors who are like amazing at screaming um um i did a a danish horror film like 10 years ago or something and i i recorded lots of different screaming for that and i got hold of this amazing scream that was so piercing that i actually couldn't use it for that film back then but then when this one came up, I was just like, ah, I really need that scream recording. So, um, so yeah, then I, then I used this piercing, piercing scream. I mean, back when I recorded it, it was so loud that the, the microphone like stopped working. So I had to like put a new microphone up and, <laughs> and to record this very, very loud scream. But what often happens and what happens a lot in the film is that then these human sounds, I mean, are often like cut together with other sounds and a lot of layers of different voices. Um, I did a big, big, uh, I mean, several actually recording sessions with Alyssa Sutherland, who plays Ellie, uh, where she was just screaming and making weird noises. I mean, it was just like, Okay, what can what, can you do something like this? Can you do something like that? And can and she could do all these weird things with her voice. So some of what you hear in the film is her, and then um, there was this Danish singer um, called um, Jenny Rosanda. Um, she calls herself Lumor, um, and she um, I just knew from before that she had were able to do all these crazy voices. So I actually also got her in the studio as one of the first things I did and just recorded her making lots of weird screams. Um, so I really built up a library of all kinds of weird voices and screams for all the different voices that you hear in this film. I suppose it's, very, it's a very stressful uh, job for the the person uh, screaming how, how much uh, how much longer could uh, could uh, be this screaming session you know 
I mean, usually not much longer than an hour. Then you get start losing your voice. Uh, yeah, sometimes a little more. I mean, as an actor, you and a singer also, then you learn to kind of use your vocal cords in a way so that you don't damage them so much. But still, doing all these crazy weird voices, it 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 is hard on the voice. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I have this uh, funny conversation with Betsy Baker from the first Evil Dead. Uh, she is um, Linda in the first Evil Dead, and she still has that um, laugh, this, that, that heavy laugh. Uh, and uh, and I asked her, "How can you do this?" I mean, uh, and she told me she is a singer and she can control her her uh, vocal, you know, uh, yeah. chord. So, so I mean, this this makes full sense uh, now. You are you are talking to me about that. I mean, you need uh, this kind of you know, a and about your neighbor. I mean, uh, no one uh, uh, send you the police uh, at home <laughs> when they hear all this screaming, or you have uh, uh, insulated you know the space. <laughs> there were no neighbors and no police coming around, but yeah, there were some pretty crazy sounds. Um, I mean, during the whole process on this film just so much like really crazy noisy stuff yeah that's great that's great now so now um i'm going to show a thing uh just a moment uh, 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 uh. so this one this one you can see here evil dead ride sonic scream deconstructed this video i'm going not to play it at all because it's it's long and uh it, very interesting, but uh, pretty long. And uh, it, it is a technical video about uh, um, the way in which you realized uh, um, the alley but tab scream. And it's a great video credit to this uh, in-depth sound design channel. It's it's the, uh, it's a video everyone must see. So I'm going to take the, the link and put it on the, the 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 comment section so you uh, every one of you that was is watching this uh, this this live can see this video after um, the live is finished maybe or even when you want i mean in the meantime uh, there is a, a, a not just before you go to sleep yes yes exactly exactly mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, there is this uh, uh, just a moment because i have to find it I lost the link and the PC does, doesn't help me, so I'm sending it from my 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 mail. Uh, there is a shorter version of this link, uh, the of this video, sorry, and uh, so we can talk about that one. It's arriving, just a moment. Uh, technology is not helpful when you need it, obviously. Okay, I have it. Okay, this is the volume. Okay, I can put it full screen and then we can share it. Okay, it's arriving. So this is the way, uh, this is a, a quick uh, uh, summary of how this, uh, the, the, the buff of Ellie uh, scream was done. Okay, so it's arriving. Wow, wow. <laughs> so so my first question is, uh, this is how sound your uh, coffee machine. I mean, it's, it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's funny because you, I mean, the, the amazing thing about sound is that you, 
you you start thinking out of the box. I mean, you just hear a sound and then you get associations. And instead of kind of using maybe the the real sound, and in this in Evil Dead Rise, there's nothing that's real in that sense. You have to kind of make it feel real, but that's something very different. And then I just get got all these associations. So uh, for example, the coffee machine that just had this. I was looking for something that was wet. Well, like you were like almost like recording a spit, and then also it kind of worked well together with the voice. So you get those kind of crazy ideas using a camel I recorded at the pyramids in Cairo, where I was standing with a recorder some years back, and I just remember this really aggressive, very angry camel that I recorded, and. Um, uh, the, the guy who was handling the camel was actually afraid because he thought the camel was going to attack me. But when you record sounds, you're kind of like, okay, it just, I need to get closer. It needs to be very close. So I had this amazing recording that I also thought, okay, that's going to be perfect for this moment. So yeah, when you, when you start working on, on, on something like this, you, like for me, I get all these associations with different sounds that I can then build and create a, a, a hopefully a, a very kind of unique and special sound design for for a moment like that. I mean, uh, uh, this sound can haunt me in, during the night, so it's very well executed. I mean, I, I have to say, uh, when you say the word sound designer, I mean, it, it could seem some kind of technical you know job but given the thing the, the video i just seen and the way we just playing it me i mean I, I think it's a form of art itself i mean uh, it's great uh, i mean it's 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 a it's audio made art i mean it's a it's a it's a form of art i mean i suppose uh, something uh, because it's creativity is not just you know there is a technical part for sure maybe it's the less uh, funny i don't know or maybe it's the funniest one, depending on uh, how much you are keen on technologies. But uh, it's a form of art, of art, I suppose. It. I mean, I think sound design for movies is like very much an art form for sure. It's uh, the ones that are very good at it are like really artists. Of course, with film, and this goes for all the different people working on a film, even the director. I mean, everybody has to have a little bit of some technical knowledge about what they're doing. But when it comes to like creating like the, the storytelling and creating some unique experience with like cinematography or picture editing or music or sound, then it is an art form. And I think especially on on something like Evil Dead Rise, where you need to create so many special sounds, so many unique sounds and so many uh, scenes that are just like based around the sound, then sound really is a very, very, very big part of the film. I have to ask, how, how long it takes to do this particular scene and having this association between sound? I mean, how can it take? Um, it's a little hard to kind of uh, say exactly because it's, uh, I mean, the first pass on a scene like this maybe takes two, three days. Then I do a second pass that takes two, three days. Then I do a third pass that takes a couple of days. And then, I mean, it's a scene, some of these big key sequences in the film we went back to several times and kind of refined and put in some new things and added stuff. So um, uh, I guess a sequence like this is probably, I don't know, a couple of weeks work or something like that. Um, wow. So it's, I mean, it takes a long time to build something like this. And, uh, um, and I mean, this is just like, I don't know, what is it, like 15 seconds of the film or something. Yeah, I, I really love that. Uh, as I love the the way in which uh, the diet voice sound. How did this work? I mean, uh, how it is uh, real? How a simple the diet voice is realized? You told me about uh, many voices, one up the other one. But 
precisely. Uh, give me an example. I mean, for example, the, the girl at the beginning of the movie that start uh, reading the book, uh, not reading the book, uh, uh, to, to talking about the book uh, the, the other girl is reading uh, by art. I mean. Um, there were places where we were kind of doing the old kind of evil dead trick where you pitch down the voice a little bit and then you, um, I mean, and that just makes it a little darker and scarier. And sometimes we did that. Um, um, and we also did that with Bridget, for example, later on in the film. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you usually, there were more elements cut into this so that um, I I often had the actors kind of say these lines several times, like one whispered and one normal speech and one going with a deep voice so that you could cut in those words on top of each other so that it's almost like it's one voice but several voices at the same time. So, like in the sense that every word is cut in on top of each other but with said with different voices so there's a whisper and a and a deep voice and a normal voice on top of each other um so we did that and then we also um uh, kind of took uh, like sometimes when you clean up noisy dialogue uh, you remove all the 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 ugly sounds that we make with our tongue and the spit in our mouth we remove that when we clean up the dialogue usually that's what we do but in this film there were several places where we actually brought that out and then used that so it's like on top of the voice so that it was both different voices set with from the actor uh, then it was the spit Sometimes we also had um, another, the voice actor I mentioned previously, who was a singer. She also did a whispered version of something or maybe a little bit of a scream. And then maybe also cutting in like breaths or sounds from, from uh, animals that had kind of a little bit of the same feeling like. <laughs> so. There were all these different elements cut together, and sometimes you can you can feel that there's like that it's a complex voice. Sometimes it's it feels a little more simple, but it kind of it has all these. It was important that that it had all these elements so that it wasn't just like okay, these deadites they just sound like in one way because you were gonna listen to deadites for an hour throughout the film so it needed to be interesting all the time so we did all these different tricks to make it interesting and feel surprising and shocking the way that the voices sounded that, that that's great and uh, does there any actor have a a very uh, a voice uh, uh, that is uh, uh, very adapted this kind of uh, rework or um, I mean they just act in a standard way and it, it's just sound design magic let's say I mean they have a voice there are there any actors that can do a very mm, horrible voice or with some kind of you know tone that seems already a monster without I think all the actors in the film actually did a lot of really amazing sounds for the i mean with their voices they really tried out different things um and i mean especially elisa because she like she had such she was like the main dead eyed and like you you have so many scenes with her where she needs to sound in different ways and you also need to kind of get the development that she starts out being normal and then like i wanted this feeling of her of her like like her body and her voice falling apart during the film so that her voice becomes more and more rough and weird throughout the film and we also made all these like we made all these sounds of like of her her movements and they become more and more evident throughout the film so that every time she moves she has all these sounds that are like 
like if her body was falling apart and you could hear the bones breaking inside yeah, of her body. Yeah. So in that sense, it's it's all these different sounds that then play together. That That's great. I had uh, interviewed Mark Mitchison that uh, was uh, Mr. Fonda in the movie, but uh, he was even the guy that uh, read the uh, vinyl voice. I mean, it was the Father Littleton uh, voice. And uh, after I discovered that, in, in effect, I can recognize his voice, but he told me substantially uh, the, re the recording happens online, right? I mean, uh, no, not in person. So I have another technical question about this. What kind of uh, tools you use? Because uh, usual, uh, usual, uh, you know, video conference tools have very low quality uh, audio. So, so what we do is that, um, I mean, for a film like this, where the actors were all over the world, we couldn't, I mean, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't ourselves kind of fly out to all the different studios around the world. I mean, there were people in the US, there were people in Australia, there were, like, there was one in Africa, there was, I mean, it was all around the, the, the world. So what you then do, then you hire, like, you rent a studio in this location where the actor is placed and in that studio they have a, a what is called a pro tools system which is the the system that we use for all the sound work so they set this up and they record in that studio um in uh, in their computer in i mean in very high quality and then we are connected through you can then connect online to the Pro Tools session so that we can sit in another country and you can look at what is coming in and you can hear the signal directly from the recording. So then you can kind of comment immediately and talk with the actor or actress. Um, and that's actually uh, pretty amazing that you can do this. That's something that's been invented during the last 10, 15 years. Ah, that's great. That's great. I mean, technology is very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. For something like this, it was amazing. Also because there was so much, I mean, they did a very good job recording sound on the set, but we also did a lot of extra voices and especially a lot of breathing. I mean, a lot of, lot of, lot of breathing. Um, so just, a, I mean, <laughs> all these things that, that, really make you feel like you're close to the characters um and it's all often all these small breaths and stuff that really make you believe that you're in love. So, so sorry uh, one of uh, your uh, typical day was uh, connecting to your pc and uh, having a direct conversation with a, a single actor uh, or uh, there are even more uh, more actors in the same uh, you know take uh, no, it was one at one. You do one actor at a time because you kind of need to do. I mean, it's so much work just going through the film with one actor. Uh, and then, I mean, because there was a lot of recordings, then some of the recordings I did, some of the recordings my dialogue editor did, because at some point it was also like some, uh, like there was one actor who was in Australia. There's like a 12 hour time difference to Europe where we were. Oh, so I we, know. Had to in, <laughs> we had to sit in the middle of the night. To, I mean, th three o'clock in the night, sitting during ADR for like be being able to record with someone during the day. So yeah, there was all these practical issues, but um, but yeah, so it was a lot of work, but it was really worth it. That that's great, that's great. And uh, talking about the vinyl, um. I mean, uh, uh, so you took the voice of Mark Mitchison and then you worked out the sound of the vinyl by yourself. You uh, make the sound dear tear, dear tear, uh, or stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, how long this is a simple process? Uh, is a standard thing, or it's even, even that needs some uh, trickery, let's say? It was. I mean, that was a very, very complicated sequence with a lot of layers. And um, um, 
so the first recording of him was done during the shoot actually so we used that for the early sketches and then when we got further into uh, the sound work then we did a couple of sessions again where we recorded new elements for the priest um so it was like again something that we went back to and refined and refined but to create the voice of the vinyl then then we took the that recording and then um you did all the first like also doing this kind of pitch thing where it feels like because it's like played on an old 78 vinyl yeah yeah and the speed is like going like that so it's like so we did that then we did all these kind of manipulations to making it feel sometimes it's like small and tiny but other times the voice gets really really big so there's all these trickery things that are done and um the dialogue mixer and editor garrett farrell um it also i mean he just did an amazing job with this so but we kept on going back to kind of like playing around with how that voice should sound oh, okay so you 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 told about uh, dialogue uh dialogue uh, what is the the right word dialogue uh editor? Dialogue mixing and dialogue editing yeah okay so that one is the the classic uh dubbing you know or, yeah or what can... yeah. yeah so uh when we are mixing then for this film i think there was i don't know a thousand tracks of sound brought in on two different computers and then you sit in front of a big mixing console and then there was uh, garrett was mixing dialogue and music and there was a, a spanish mixer the gabriel Gutierrez, who was mixing uh, effects and um, foley and then we were sitting there next to each other and kind of just like constantly trying out things and building up the whole soundscape from all these sounds that had been made like for seven months and then yeah we were mixing for almost two months are you talking of this uh just a moment did you sent me a picture so i suppose this is this is group uh, of person you are talking about but i would like to be to share it because it's a great picture uh here it is yeah so this is from the mix so what you see there is of course from the from right it's bruce campbell executive producer then it's next to him is garrett who is the dialogue mixer and music mixer and then it's me then it's lee cronin who's the director and script writer and then it was Gabriel um, from Spain, who mixed effects and Foley. And what you see behind us, you can see the mixing console, the mixing consoles. There's two mixing consoles, one that Garrett was using and one that Gabriel was using. And we were kind of sitting there. And then you sit there looking at, you can see that giant screen behind us. So that's where we like then watch the film and then you then you work on these two mixing consoles and like every button that you see um, does something with the sound so it's uh, it's a lot of buttons uh, and uh, a lot of fun that, that's great and uh, you took this photo before starting or at the end of the process yeah they ended the process when we were finished then we took this picture and uh, so if we look a bit tired then that's that's why that's great that's great yeah 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 absolutely okay that's great and um have you some memory of the best moment and even of the the worst one i mean uh, there will there should be something uh, easier or funniest to do and something more less less funny sometimes i mean it's work so it happens no um I mean, some I mean, some stuff was harder to do than other stuff for sure, but it it was really like just a great creative experience where we were experimenting so much. Um, my, I mean, I'm I'm not the only one working on the sound, as you see there from the mix. Then there's two mixers, but before that, I have a I have a team of like ten people helping me. So, 
a lot of the kind of boring technical stuff i have like some assistant who can help me with some of that so i'm 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 very fortunate to got just get to do all the fun stuff and i might but of course it's also like um one thing is to create all these sounds another thing is to make sure that when you kind of really f have the overall film that the sound feels right for the film and uh, for, for example the whole climax in in the parking garage it's so complex and there's so many things happening so i remember like the first pass we did on that there was just so much sound it was just like it was like an explosion of sound and then you kind of had to go in and kind of find out okay so okay so we had to make it quiet and then loud and then quiet and then loud so we did that a lot throughout the film really making the film as dynamic as possible because you could make a film like this super super loud all the time and it would be like it, you wouldn't be able to stomach it it would be so like it would be so overwhelming but um yeah so so we spent a lot of time on really making sure that it was as dynamic as possible that that's great that's really that's really incredible i mean all, all the think, jobs a, a sound that we actually like were were really working hard on like all i mean that we didn't really finish until we got to the mix was the sound of um the moving camera <sighs> like how how do we kind of take the i mean it's such an iconic thing from the old evil dead films uh and we kind of wanted to kind of update that and kind of use kind of in a way go from the old sound there's there's a bit of the old sound um that we're using in the beginning and then throughout the film it becomes something new but we still wanted to ca kind of have that feeling of like when the camera is moving like that and um uh Bruce told us that that the old version was actually done by by I think him and Sam kind of like doing like that Ooh, on top of each other a lot of times and then pitching it down Ooh, so that you got this <laughs> weird sound so we actually also tried doing that so you what you hear in the film is also the sound of lee cronin and me doing i think also maybe bruce like <laughs> for some of these camera things where it's just like where you where it feels like you're inside the force that, that that's that's great and uh I, I have to ask even another thing i mean i've seen that video i suggested to watch it to everyone and there is even a part related to the music how much close you did work with steven Mc, mckeon i mean uh, uh you got already the soundtrack when you start mounting it was a collaborative you know uh work in order to find you know for example in the sequence of uh, alisa the the music perfectly stop in the moment she starts screaming so i suppose it's not uh, uh something random i mean i think it's studied so what kind of you know collaboration you get with him steven was also part of the project from very early on um while the picture editing was going on then he edited different like maybe some other scores and maybe some stuff that he had lying around so that he was building the music already from that point and then when we got closer to the picture lock then he started actually composing and recording but it meant that he knew what my sounds were doing and i knew what his music was doing sometimes i i mean i really worked with the sounds so that they were very integrated in his music and sometimes he took his music and kind of built it on top of my sounds it was a very close collaboration and um steven was great he's he's um he's so inventive and there's all these crazy choir things that are all over the film and then what we did with the music was also that we mixed it very i'd say very creatively where we were like having the music 
play almost like a sound effect so that we mixed it the, we mix the film in a very very immersive way where the sounds like are really moving around you all the time and we did the same with the music because we got the music was um recorded with a split up orchestra and that was actually because of covid that they were not allowed to all be in the room at the same time so they had recorded the orchestra in like different departments and elements so that we had lots and lots of tracks of all the different elements of the orchestra and we could then split this out and then it could kind of move around us in the uh, when you when when you're in the cinema like and really get the full sound experience of the film then the music is like really enveloping you and we are also kind of doing things with the music where where like for example when for this scene just before the bathtub scream where where ellie comes to the bathtub and she's like she's put under the water then we mix the music as as if you're hearing it through the water and then it comes up and plays and woo, 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 woo. so we do all these things and manipulations with the music and steve uh, and Stephen McKeon just loved that. I mean, there was also this moment where Bridget just uh, just after the the um, the cheese grater moment, yeah. where where I just felt like okay, after that moment, we just need it needs to be so intense and evil. And then I took Steve Stephen's music and then I distorted it like crazy, like. <laughs> And when I was playing that for Steven the first time, I was thinking, okay, he's gonna like he's gonna go crazy. Like I I took all his music and just really distorted it. But Steven just loved it. He was so excited. This is punk rock. This is great. So he really <laughs> loved things like that. So yeah, there was a lot of really creative interplay between sound design and music. Uh, you talked about the screen great uh, the, the screen great the um... Uh, she's greater. Sorry, my English sometimes go away. Uh, the she's greater scene. So um, I was thinking to all the tools that are used as weapon in World of Rise, and they have this sound like stuff like that. Okay. So um, are even those sound make uh, made with the uh, trickery like the one you told me I mean or, or uh, you have uh, some digital sound already uh, you can, that can be useful and you mix them uh, how does this work um, for the film like there's very little that's from any archive like pretty much all you hear is recorded specifically for the film and what you do then with these kind of these more splatty kind of bloody scenes you often use different sounds of food, uh, of uh, vegetables, like um, celery is really great for breaking bones, like <coughs> you break a celery. <coughs> or um, there's the scene with the eye that's bitten out, and that is the sound of Bruce Campbell biting in an apple. This one, wait a moment, because I, I just got the picture. I was uh, I'm going to I was going to ask that but you you anticipated me this one right <laughs> Yeah that it was uh, it, you were there or it was a uh, remote I I I've I've taken that picture that's me Oh that's great <laughs> Uh actually like the picture is a little bigger and you see the screen in front of him but yeah so so um so yeah I took that picture that was uh, at the the Irish Foley artist. We all went out there, and uh, and Bruce recorded this uh, sound um, with the, the apple. Well, so there is a gun here, a mobile phone. I can see some yeah. other some other fruits. So it's all all of these Foley props. So it's all kind of it's like all of that is fake. Like of course the fruits are, are not. Are, right but like for example the gun that's like a that's like a, a like a theater piece or a fake gun you know yeah yeah yeah, absolutely so all this stuff is using to to create sounds 
Yeah, exactly. Wow. It's, it's, it should be very funny and even complex, I mean. Yeah, the, you, I mean, we record so many sounds. Uh, for everything you see in the film, we kind of recorded a specific sound for that. Um, and, uh, and and for the eye scene, I mean, uh, that, that was recorded specifically for that, or after uh, Bruce recorded this, uh, you found uh, the appropriate way to use it? No, no, Bruce recorded this for the scene with the eye. Okay, okay. Specifically, I mean... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was... specifically for that scene. So... Yeah, it, it really worked be in a good way, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very effective. Yeah, you believe it. It feels very, very disgusting. And it's just him biting an apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have this book. Hopefully it's not eaten by my background. Practical <laughs> Art of Motion Picture Sound. And uh, I got this one because um, uh, something like uh, four years ago, I wrote an essay for... Um, Italian audience about the Evil Dead uh, franchise, and I would like to go deeper. I, I like uh, this kind of, you know, material going deep uh, and like the conversation with you. I mean, it's for me, it's gold. It's a, it's a gold mine, you know. And um, there is a, an interview with Bruce Campbell at the moment because I have to find that there is a there is a piece in which uh, he describe he describe uh, the way in which they, they, uh, I don't, obviously I don't found it. Um, the way in which they recorded the sound for the first Evil Dead, there is a, a part in which they talk about the fact that they used the uh, chicken meat mm -hmm. to make the sounds. Yeah. And at the end of the recordings, I, I will found it. At the, at the end of the recording, um, what happened is uh, that the, the 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 room in which they recorded was very stinky. I mean, it's, it's uh, <laughs> ju just a moment because if I found a, 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 an excerpt, I would like to share it with you because it's uh, it's 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 so it was so fun. But I don't found uh, here it is nine. Okay, it was the first pages. I remember something like that. But yeah, yeah. Bruce, is, Bruce is very passionate about sound. He really, um, he's, he's been helping Sam Raimi on several of his other films also with the sound. And he um, really knows all the details of what you can do with the sound. So um, he was great. Um, so um, like having a director like Lee Cronin was amazing. And then having Bruce there as well was really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I don't found the part because I, uh, I have the, I had to, to find it before <laughs> calling you and not, be, and not during the live. But, however, it it was pretty, it was pretty, it was pretty fun uh, to read that uh, that kind of stuff. That uh, bring me a, a, another thing in mind uh, of the thing you were talking about before. The fact that uh, um, every actor uh, rea um, reacts some of the scenes uh, or, the, or their voices. So, how much of their the original voices took during the um, the, the, the the effective the, the real filming are used, or the actors does the actors dub their their self? Because I, I live in a, in a country. Sadly, uh, my country is famous because. Uh, uh, Substantially, we don't see original language movies, but we have our dubber. And every film, every movie in the theater is in Italian. And uh, if you want to see original language, but like I would, I would love to. You need a DVD, a Blu-ray, or a streaming stuff. So, uh, how does this work for the original movie? I mean, they they dub themselves, or uh, you can use even their original voice from the the shoot. Um, some of it is from the shoot, some of it is dubbed. I, I think, um, uh, I don't know, it's it's in a film like this, I think, uh, maybe a third of it is dubbed, and then two thirds are stuff that's recorded. But, um, also sometimes you just use tiny 
parts of something when you dub and maybe just a word or something that you need. Um, so, I mean, sometimes you dub because you need to uh, clear something that's where there's a bit of noise on top of the dialogue, but it could also be a new line that you need to add or something like that. But yeah, in a film like this, there's quite a lot of ADR, as it's called, automated dialogue replacement. Like, so it's um, it's quite a lot of dubbing that's going on in a film like this. But yeah, I know that uh, in some territories, then they dub the whole film. Did you watch the film in Italian? Uh, sadly, it was my it was my first uh, occasion in which I watched the movie, because I have a sad story. There was a, a premiere of the movie in London with uh, Mr. Lee Cronin attending at the premiere, and I took the a ticket, but uh, I didn't have my passport renewed in time for watching it in English before it came out. So I gifted my um, fun story. I gifted my uh, my ticket to another guy that live in Manchester, and uh, uh, the the fun stuff even is is even that during the the the, the, the movie uh, was projected in front of in, in the the place in which I should be have been in the place behind there is an actor from Stranger Things then watching <laughs> the movie. So I, I mean it was a very unlucky situation. But I watched the, the, first, the, the first time the movie in Italian. Then I have to wait something like uh, a couple of months to rewatch it. As soon as it came out in digital, I got it and rewatched it in original language, obviously, because I, I, I am a purist. Yeah. Now, now that I can talk English, uh, I, I prefer watch it in original, you know. I hope it was still scary in Italian. Yep, yeah, they did a good work. They did a good work, but you know, um, sometimes the voice, the voices are different. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, they're, 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 they're the pitch of the voice, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you cannot enjoy Bruce Campbell uh, talking in the, the, the vinyl, you know, uh, in Italian version. I mean, uh, there is no uh, no clue uh, he was talking there. So it, it, it's a shame. I mean. Uh, it's a shame even because uh, in Italy it, it's even harder to learn English if you are not, yeah. uh, you, you have not your, I don't know, uh, an idea you would like to, to learn it. I mean, I started to learn English because when I was a child, uh, I, 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 buy, I bought video games for the Game Boy and uh, they were uh, English instruction, you know, English booklets. So you need yeah. to understand how they work. But <laughs> that's how it started. But uh, it, it's harder for us. I mean, I see in Portugal, for example, they, they, they have a movie subbed, but not dubbed, for example. You can see the oh, movie in the theater. In okay. original, you have to see in original language. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, here in Denmark, all all of the films are in original language. So we yeah. get used to films that are like a lot of English and so on. So that's also helpful with the language, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a it's a nightmare for for us it, learning English. If you you want to learn English, you have to have a, a big effort. It's not yeah. natural, and. Okay, so we talked a lot about Evil Dead Rise, but uh, I, I wasn't not a very cool uh, uh, presenter because I didn't ask you uh, about your previous job and your future project, the one that can be disclosed, obviously. Can you see something about what are you working on or you work at the, in the past that you are very proud of? Oh well, um, I'm 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 very privileged to get to work with a lot of filmmakers who are really really into sound and who really wants to use sound in a very creative way. Um, I um, recently I've I I just mixed a film at the Skywalker Ranch in the U.S. Uh, um, a film, uh, a, a, actually a documentary, um, but a very, very ambitious sound work, which I did together with Nicola Becker, who won the Oscar for Sound of Metal 
the sound of sound metal. Um, so uh, yeah, that was a fun job. Um, uh, right now, I'm I'm working on a I mean several different projects. I'm you're not I mean I'm not allowed to say that Absolutely. much. No, no. Um, but when yeah. looking back, I mean some I mean there's several projects that I'm very proud of. Uh, I mean, it's it, you. I put I put so much effort e into every project that I work on, but it was actually fun um, when we did the when there was the world premiere of Evil Dead Rise at South by Southwest, like almost a year ago, actually a little more than a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Back when, just before that, it was there was the Oscars, and I did the sound for. A film called A House Made of Splinters, a Danish film, which was nominated. So I was at the Oscars, and then wow. I went directly from the Oscars to the to South by Southwest. So um, that was very funny. Um, so uh, yeah, I've I've been I've been working on a lot of different films. I both do feature films from many different countries. I do documentaries from many different countries. And uh, now uh, Lee is lining up some new stuff, and uh, and hopefully we get to work together again. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. I know he's working on a movie uh, that was announced, but uh, there is no trailer yet. I know uh, something like it's called Doe or something like that, but I didn't find so much at all for now. Uh, then I know that uh, a new Evil Dead uh, was uh, pitched, but there is no news about it at all at the moment. Uh, I will be, I will be very happy if you work will work on this, but just because I mean you did an astounding job on the on your own rise, so I mean good good team and uh, a good team not, not, doesn't need to be changed, you know. Uh, <laughs> And uh, however, let's see what happens. Yeah, finger crossed, you know. And uh, however, let's say, um, okay, I think we are, we are done. I mean, we we uh, talked a lot about uh, the, the the sound making. I mean, I could talk with you something like uh, other three hours probably, but uh, <laughs> I don't want you. <laughs> I don't want you to fall asleep in front of the monitor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm showing you this card that Lee said. So, I don't know. So, he sent me this card. Wow. Wow. That's uh, great. That's great. It's lovely. And I love even the the marauder uh, on the on the yeah, back. Exactly. exactly. Pro probably, probably, I'm going to interview soon the 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 the, uh, um, the concept artist behind the marauder. Ah, so, cool. So 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 I will know something more about that. Uh, I, I interviewed the guy that make that draw because um, my third life I had. Uh, uh, a concept artist and a Necronomicon artist from the, the TV show and the movie. So we talked a lot about the the, the pages and uh, it, it was very fun because in the end of the, the live, uh, we took the uh, final, uh, um, uh, the, the ending the screen, the ending titles, and we watched all the cards and uh, there was even you there. Uh, I mean, and uh, it was, it was, Great because if we commented each single uh, card and would draw draw that one and it was really funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Lee Lee was the one who I mean usually you don't credit the sound people up there you kind of credit you put them in the end roller but Lee really wanted me credited up there so I'm very grateful for that. That was. Well, that well uh, uh, watching the movie and watching what, what you showed. With, I mean now I mean I think uh, you you had a very people start rolling I mean uh, I mean in in the the making of this so uh, I, everyone had a I mean I interviewed a lot of people that had, had the people start rolling in this I had Nick Bassett I had uh, uh, 
um, David Garbett, uh, I mean, every one of them, Amazing. You, including you. Uh, I mean, every time, you know, uh, I, I talk with one of you guys that, which working on the movie, I can feel, you know, how much you loved your work and how much effort. Because sometimes it's the thing I always tell, you know, you know, when, when a movie like Evil Dead Rise come out, uh, it polarizes attention because it's an Evil Dead movie. So there is surely be someone that told that to tell, oh my God, this this movie is not the original, so I don't want, want to watch it or oh, I seen it as a shitty movie or stuff like that, you know? And I really get mad uh, uh, when I see that kind of stuff because they don't know at all how much work and love there is behind a feature film like this. Everything, I mean, we are too well, you know, uh, too well, uh, um, it's easier to, to criticize a movie mm. without having seen what is behind it. I mean, so, I, I mean, uh, you, your effort is incredible. I mean, I must say that I've never experienced so much positive feedback about anything I worked on. And it's, I mean, I've been getting the greetings from all over the world, like both the Evil Dead fans and a lot of colleagues in the film sound business, like just getting, I mean, so many kind words from all over the world it's been really really amazing so for me like being part of this like franchise that i love so much and then getting that kind of reaction was amazing and i mean at south by southwest i got to meet sam raimi and even he like he was also saying you did a great job peter and for me that's kind of the greatest compliment you can get yeah i can i can uh i can feel that i mean I can feel that. Okay, so now I'm going to sell it to you. Please don't disconnect because I'm going to sell it to you after I close the live. Uh, but for now, the live is over. Uh, every For everyone that watched this one, see you in the next couple of weeks. I'm probably going to have a, another, couple, another cool guest that is uh, Tom Sullivan on the 4th of April. Tom Sullivan is the one that created the very Necronomicon from the first movie. So it's a very cool, cool guest. And uh, I'm going to announce it the, the live soon in the next few days. But in the meanwhile, uh, thank you, Peter, for being here. Uh, it was an honor and a very, very cool to know all these behind the scene details. And uh, thank for everyone that's joined it. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.